Hey everybody, it's John again with Grace, Liberty, and the finished work of Jesus Christ. And welcome to Logic Fact. Okay, so these are things uh, that I think are logical, right? It's fact. And, you know, it, the fact leads to some really logical conclusions, at least in my mind anyway. All right, so today's Logic Fact is, if sin was paid for on the cross... Why would I have to pay for sin myself through punishment or purgatory? We don't. We don't. Punishment is not a biblical thing, at least not in the New Testament. Okay, and before anybody gets crazy on me, uh, I'm going to say a couple things. That, first of all, uh, the word discipline usually means hands-on training. Um, and... What's going on in the book of Revelation is not punishment and it's not judgment on sin. Why? Because sin was judged on the cross. Sin was judged on the cross, my friends. Jesus Christ got judged for our sins. In John chapter 3, everybody knows verse uh, Everybody knows verse 16, right? John 3, 16. People quote it all the time. It's one of the most famous verses ever. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. But I think people forget the verse after that, verse 17. As a matter of fact, I know they forget it because, you know, they take the first one out of context. All right, verse 17, right after that says, why did uh, all that happen in verse 16? Why? Because... It says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. <gasps> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did, did the Bible just say that there's no condemnation and no punishment? No. Yeah. Why? Because Jesus came not to condemn the world, but to save the world. He that believes in him, verse 18, again, verses that are never quoted. Uh, verse 18 says, he that believes in him is not condemned, not punished. But he that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the only begotten son of God. You see, my friends, what Jesus is saying here is that he doesn't have to punish people. Why? Because we live in a constant state of punishment simply by being separated from, from God as um, you know, when we're unbelievers. And when we are believers and we live in our own flesh and our own power, then we're operating in that state as well. Even though we're saved and God isn't condemning us, God is not judging us and God is not punishing us because sin was punished on the cross. Titus 2, 11 and 12 teaches me that it's grace that teaches me to deny ungodliness. Grace. Not punishment. And like I said, all that stuff going on in the book of Revelation is not judgment on sin. Because sin was judged on the cross. It's judgment on the world system. Or, in other words, it's God saying, okay, Satan, you think you can do it on your own? Here you go. Okay, people, you want to do it on your own without me? Here you go. That's all it is. And we can see what happens. Right? It's not sin that's being punished. It's not God's people that are being punished. Mm -mm, not happening. John 19.30. Oh, you ready for this? You ready? Well, here's the Bible. It's right out of the Bible. Okay, John 19.30. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, what did he say? Everybody say it together. It is finished. And it is finished, my friends. The word finished literally means that a debt is paid off. Right? The, the books, the financial books are crossed out. That person doesn't owe anything anymore ever again. If I owe nothing because my debt has been paid, how am I being punished? I'm not. You know, and for those people who believe in purgatory, that also, you know, deletes that whole idea that purgatory is even a thing. 
It's not a thing. All right? Very, very important. You know, there are people out there who will say stupid stuff like, well, you know, uh, I got in a car well, after I was drinking. I got into a car accident. God is judging me. No, God isn't judging you. That's just you reaping, you know, the, you know, the results of being stupid. God had nothing to do with you judging, judging you on that. That's just you, you know, doing something stupid and something stupid happened to you. You get it? Right? Now, therefore, if God does not punish me, if God uh, does not see me after my sin, because he can't, because it's paid for, everything God does and every, everything that God sees me as is perfect and holy. Why? Because the cross paid for it all. You got it? That means God cannot act towards you in a way that is not perfect and holy, as if you were perfect and holy. You got me? All right. So now, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. That's a verse that people always, I think, misunderstand and misinterpret to a degree. Uh, no, it's not like totally blown out of context, but it's, I think the, uh, the actual meaning is a little bit different, right? It says, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, so people use this as a salvation verse. Here's the problem. It's, the context doesn't lend it to be a salvation verse. Doesn't mean that it doesn't speak about salvation. No, it, it does you know, to a degree, talk about salvation, but not specifically only about salvation, right? For by grace, so grace, undeserved, unmerited favor with no need of repayment, charis in the Greek. Are you saved? The word saved simply means to be delivered from danger. It has nothing to do with eternal salvation specifically. Any Saved from any kind of danger. Now, yes, eternal salvation means I'm saved from hell. Okay, so that is danger. So it does apply in this um, in this context, okay? Um, and salvation does only come by believing in Jesus Christ. Only by believing in Jesus Christ. However, this verse does not apply only to salvation, but any kind of danger, any kind of deliverance from anything. So let's look, and faith here means to be persuaded of. So what are we saying? For by undeserved, unmerited favor with no need of repayment, you are delivered through being persuaded. Of what? Grace. The more you are persuaded of grace, the more you trust in grace, the more you are delivered from the things that hold you back, from the things that you may be doing that may, you know, cause you harm, from your bad habits, your addictions, anything you need to be delivered from. It doesn't come from legalism. It doesn't come from punishment. Life is changed by grace. So that being said, my friends, Remember, it is finished. If sin was paid for on the cross, why would I have to pay for my sin? Why would I be punished? I don't, and I'm not. God bless. Have a great day.